The USB cable we've been using for our speedometer provides power to the device and it allows the device to report the measured speed to the connected computer. In this third and final part of the series, I'm going to show you how to eliminate that cable, making the speedometer a standalone unit. Welcome back to my channel, and as always, thanks to my subscribers. In order to eliminate that USB cable, we must provide two inexpensive bits of hardware, a battery connection and a liquid crystal display, or LCD. We'll also need to modify our program, or sketch if you prefer, to display the measured speed on the LCD. So as usual with Arduino projects, this project has two separate and mutually dependent phases, modifying the hardware and modifying the software. Before we begin, let's make a few improvements to the original device. In part one, I located the slots in the frame platform in the wrong spot. Mounting the Arduino in the center of the frame did not leave enough room for the 9 volt battery on either side of the Nano, so I had to extend the slots toward one end of the frame. Then, to keep the Nano in position, I cemented short lengths of styrene strip on either end of the Nano. These, along with the double-sided foam tape, will keep the Nano in position. Next, I wanted to make the IR sensors more secure so I cemented short lengths of styrene strip at the inside edges of the sensors, and I drilled a hole through the foam tape and the platform for a small mounting screw. The tape plus the styrene plus the screw will hold the IR sensors securely. Finally, I fastened down all the excess wire using Kapton tape. This just keeps everything neat, allowing the unit to sit flat and keeping the connecting wires from coming unplugged. With that done, I moved on to the hardware modifications. Let's discuss the power supply first. Independent power will be provided by a 9 volt battery. We'll need a battery harness to connect the battery to the Arduino, and we'll need an on-off switch. Any two-position switch will work. I used this DPDT switch just because I happened to have one on hand. There are 9 volt battery holders available and some even include on off switches. Buy whatever you like. I'm using this harness because it's what I had available. Since I didn't buy a battery holder, I will have to make a battery clip to hold my battery in place. Adding the battery is pretty simple. The 9 volt battery fits in the larger space under the frame. Run the red battery harness lead to one contact on your switch, then solder the other switch contact to a short female connector wire. Ideally, this should be a red wire to avoid confusion, but the electricity doesn't care which color you use. If you're using a double pole switch, as I am, you'll connect the battery ground through the other side of the switch. When you have the switch wired, mount the switch on one end support. If you're using a single pole switch, solder the black wire from the battery harness to another female connector wire, preferably black. But there's one little wrinkle. We will need to connect the Arduino ground to the battery ground and to the LCD1602 ground, so we'll need another Y cable. One end needs a female connector, this will attach to the Nano, and the other two ends will be bare wire which must be tinned. You'll solder one of those tinned ends to the battery ground, and the other tinned end will insert into a screw terminal on the PCB. With the battery installed, plug the positive female connector onto the VIN pin, and plug the ground female connector onto the GND pin. Test the power supply by turning the battery switch on. The red power LED on the Arduino should light, and the power lights on the IR sensors should light. If you wave your hand in front of an IR sensor, the second LED should light, indicating that the sensor is working. Check both sensors. Now turn off the battery switch and proceed to installing the display. Here is the display I will be using. It is called an LCD1602. 
LCD, of course, stands for liquid crystal display, and the 1602 designation means the device can display two lines of 16 characters each. As you can see, the LCD has a row of 16 contact pads along the upper left edge of the board. The easiest way to connect to this board is by soldering a pin header to the board. There are some additional parts you'll need, and they are shown here. In addition to the display and the pin header, you'll need a 10,000 ohm potentiometer, a 220 ohm resistor, two four pin screw terminals, and this custom printed PCB. Why is a printed circuit board necessary? Strictly speaking, it's not. Here is the LCD in operation, connected solely by a breadboard circuit and jumper wires. This does not include the connections to the IR sensors. A custom printed circuit board eliminates a lot of this wiring, as you can see in this second video clip. The printed circuit board will cost you just over $4 with shipping. A prototyping board would cost you about $2 for 10 plus shipping, and you'd still have to solder all the wiring in place. For more information on the advantages of custom printed circuit boards, watch my video, Building and Controlling Dwarf Railroad Signals on a Budget. Assembling the board is straightforward. Solder the resistor and the potentiometer in place, and solder the two four-pin screw terminal blocks in place. Finally, insert the LCD pin header into the board and solder it in position. Now connect the LCD board to the Arduino. I clipped seven female connectors, leaving about two inches of wire attached. I stripped the cut ends and tinned the bare wire with solder. This just keeps the wires from fraying. Then insert the tinned ends into the screw terminals and plug the female connectors onto the Nano. The printing on the PCB will remind you which connection goes where. The eighth connection is the ground. You will screw the third ground connector into that terminal position. When you first power up the LCD, you might not see any text. The potentiometer adjusts the LCD backlight level. Turn the potentiometer to adjust the backlight until the text is easily visible. Finally, I mounted my LCD board to the speedometer using styrene. There are matching holes in the LCD 1602 and in the custom printed circuit board. You can run short screws through these holes and into a strip of styrene. Cement end supports to that styrene strip and glue the end supports to the top of the speedometer as shown. With the hardware complete, it's time to revise the Arduino sketch to communicate with the LCD. Open your web browser and navigate to my GitHub page. The link is in the description below this video. Find and download the file speedometer underscore ver underscore 2.ino. Open the Arduino IDE and select File, then Open. Navigate to your downloaded file and double-click the file name. As before, the IDE will offer to create a sketch folder and to move that file into that sketch folder. Click OK. Once you've loaded version 2 of the software into the IDE, remember to make the same customizations you made in the previous video. Scale, speed units, and the distance between the two IR sensors. Then click the check mark icon to check the program for errors. And there is an error. The IDE reports that there is no such file or directory called liquidcrystal.h. So what's going on here? This version of the sketch relies on a library called Liquid Crystal. That library supplies the functionality required to allow us to display messages on the LCD 1602. The line pound include liquidcrystal.h directs the IDE to include that library when it compiles the sketch. The error message tells us that the IDE can't find the library. So we need to click Tools, followed by Manage Libraries. 
This brings up this screen. In the box labeled Filter Your Search, type LCD, and the very first library displayed is called Liquid Crystal. Click the Install button. You should get this message. After that, the sketch will compile normally. Now connect your Arduino to your computer using the USB cable, but be sure you have disconnected the battery first. I don't think anything bad will happen if you fail to do this, but why take chances? Once the Arduino is connected to your computer, upload the sketch, then disconnect the USB cable. Your speedometer is now ready to use. Flip on the battery power and set the speedometer alongside your track and enjoy. As you watch my speedometer in action, let's review what we have accomplished. We have assembled between $20 and $60 of parts, depending on where you bought them, and some scrap styrene into a fully functional scale speedometer. This avoids the need to locate and buy a used AccuTrack 2, which could cost you $200 or more. In addition, you have gained valuable skills at loading sketches onto an Arduino. There are dozens of model railroad projects that use an Arduino to provide lights, sound, motion, and even a fully functional DCC system. Your new skills will help you if you decide to pursue one of these projects. As always, I have provided links to more information in the description below this video. If you want to learn more about how version 2 of the software works, continue watching. If not, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. I am assuming that you have studied the first version of the sketch and understand at least the basic idea, so I will describe just the differences between version 1 and version 2. Just a few small modifications are required to adapt the original speedometer sketch to the new hardware. After saving the sketch under its new name, the first thing I did was to add this line to include the liquid crystal library in the sketch. Then I set the values of the six pins connecting the LCD to the Arduino. And then I initialize the LCD display with those pin values. The setup function no longer needs the serial.begin statement. This is replaced by the LCD.begin statement, which sets the LCD to two rows of 16 characters each. The next statement clears the display. All that remains is to replace the serial.print commands in the two display functions with lcd.print commands. However, since the lcd.print command does not fill the remainder of the line with blank spaces, there could be leftover text from a previous message. Therefore, I added a function to clear the line before I displayed the new text.
Then I added commands to clear the appropriate lines before showing that text. And that's it. The modifications were almost trivial. This was due partly to a little forethought on my part when I wrote version 1, but mostly due to the fact that the authors of the Liquid Crystal Library used the Serial Library as a guide, making the transition almost seamless. If you have questions about any of this, please be sure to post them in the comments below. It is a sure bet that someone else will have a similar question, and they'll benefit from seeing your question and the answer to that question. I will try to answer all questions in a timely manner. Once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.